Hello students, I'm doing a program for you on a video today uh, and the reason for that is so that you can view this video uh, in your earnest and I don't have to spend much time on it in the class and that way our semester would get finished in time with some comfort. Okay, so today we're going to do a program for grading in C, in C++ program, grading a true-false quiz. So as you know, a true-false quiz has a question or list of questions and the answer could be true or answer could be false and user or the student will answer either true or false. Okay, so question is a string data type uh, answer will be true or false which in C++ 1 is used for the true and 0 is used for the false. So uh, typically uh, a student will be asked a question and they will type either 1 for the true and 0 for the false and their response will be recorded and then all the responses will be graded and their grade will be printed. If they score 60%, then they pass, otherwise they fail. I think best would be for me to actually just demo the program for you first, then describe its theory, then its code, and again, then run it one more time at the end. So this is an Xcode. Uh, Visual Studio will be same. I'm running this program first, so right now just focus on how program is being run. Okay, so save all. And it asks you, okay, here I don't know how clear it is, but basically it's asked the input file that has questions in it. And there's the input file that has questions, one question per line, and its name is questions.txt so I give that name and as soon program has read it so it says file name entered is question.txt opened has data in it and now I'm supposed to provide name of a file that has answers in it which means answer recorded are true or false for each question in the same sequence and the name of that is answers.txt and now the questions are being asked. So the first question is, Earth is flat, I can answer one for true or zero for false. And knowingly, I'm just going to answer one for each. I'm gonna assume that each answer is true. So I'm just gonna do that. So one, and I'm just gonna answer one to all the 10 questions. Obviously, that's going to fail me, but that's okay. So I'm answering true to everything. Capital of England is London, true. South Pole is an ice cap, true. Mozart was born in USA, true. In America, you can drive without a license, true. George Washington was first American president, true. And so 10 questions. This is the summary. And correct answer and the response, everything is printed. And finally, a score is given. Like in this case, I scored only three out of 10 and 30% in the quiz, so I failed the quiz. So that's how the program runs, okay? Uh, now we're going to explain a little bit of a theory behind this program using some diagrams in the Microsoft Word. And so, So basically, questions.txt file has 10 questions. We're going to create an array of size 10. This is array of size 10. And each element of the array, like first element, has a question, something like earth is flat. Second element will have a question. Third will have fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. Okay. 
So after reading the file, questions are read uh, and recorded into this array. Okay. And then there is the answer or key array which records the answer. But answer recorded as 0 or 1. So actually, you know, this is wrong. Uh, okay, yeah, this is correct. So earth is flat is the question. And then answer key is here, which is 0. 0 means false. So answer to this question is false. And same way, there may be a question here. And answer to that will be in this element. Question here, answer to that will be in this element, and so on. So. Uh, in the questions array and the answer key array, there's a match between question and the answer. So if this is the question, answer to it is in the same element, like first element of the array. If there's a question here, answer that will be in the second element of the array. Here, this is the third element of the array. If there's a question here, answer that will be in the third element and so on. So there's this mapping. Uh, answer to each question is in the same array index in which the question itself is. Okay, then as you saw in the program, user will be asked the question, they will type one or zero. So for example, in a response to this answer that earth is flat, that's a user answered one. That means they answered true. So they agreed that earth is flat. So that will be recorded in the response array. And same way, answer to the second question will be recorded here. Third, answer to third will be recorded here answer to fourth will be recorded here, fifth, and so on. So 10 answers will be recorded one at a time, okay? Finally, the program will compare, let's say zero and one here, so there's no match. So user gets no points here. They get zero point for this question, but there might be a match here and here. So they'll get one point for that. And finally, the program computes how many questions user got correct correctly answered, and then they will be given a percentage. If they have exceeded 60%, uh, then they pass the multiple choice test, otherwise they fail it, okay? Okay, so basically, of course, this is true that this question, uh, this program requires three arrays, manipulation of three arrays, a question array, a key or answer array, and a response array all three have the same number of elements in them, all right? And the program first populates the question array because question need to be asked. Then it populates the key or answer key array. And then from this array, it will present a question to the user. User will be answering that. Their response will be recorded in this array. And the same thing, user will be asked question from this element of the array and the, the response will be recorded here. And finally, we compare this array and this array for all the elements where answer is done, question is answered correctly, they get one point, otherwise they get a zero point, okay? <clears throat> so this program can be done in many different ways, but what best way to do that is using functions, okay? So we're going to show you uh, how many functions we wrote. And we're going to also show you the need for each of the functions. And then we'll explain one function at a time and show you its workings. We're not going to design from the scratch here, but we're going to show you something that has been designed and we'll just explain why it works, OK? You can come up with a different design, not a problem. But here we're just going to stick to uh, basically that has been done so far. Okay. All right. So remember three arrays, each same length. Each has capacity of 10. We declare a constant to that effect. So notice that two files have to be opened and read in this program. So first we want to make sure that there is a function called open file, which takes a if stream object as an argument and a message like what kind of file it is as an argument. And what this function does, its responsibility is that it makes sure of three things, maybe two things, that file exists and file is not empty. 
okay if those two conditions are cor correct it will bind the file name to this if stream object and since it's passed by reference it will be returned to the caller function which is the main function and notice that we are doing it by function so we don't need to really worry about the main right now we need to make sure that each function is coded correctly and working correctly uh, they're coded correctly and working correctly because I've already done that. So I will not show you that part that, hey, I coded it this, this way, and it works correctly. I'm only going to explain the code that is there and just say why it works. And later on, when I run the menu, you'll see that all this does work. Okay, so let's go to the open file function and we'll explain that to you first. Uh, Okay, so it's got to be here somewhere, somehow. My scroll is not working. Okay, so let's see why is that. Okay. Uh, okay, let's see. Open as source code file doesn't work okay let me fold this code so I'll have a little bit more room here so view code folding fold I can just see that but somehow Xcode I'm not able to scroll down right now that may have been a problem because of the recording I'm doing. Okay, so you got this so far. Uh, I'm gonna stop that right here and figure out why I'm not able to, well actually let's try one more thing. Okay, so here's my function here and I'm gonna unfold it so you can see the code. Okay, so unfold this function okay I got the function here now and hopefully I can bring it up a little bit yeah okay so I think I have my whole function here now and it's in the recording it's 13 minutes each recording cannot be exceeding 15 minutes so I think I'm going to stop that and in the video number two on this topic I'm going to explain this function and as many more as I can for this grading multiple choice. No, sorry, not multiple choice. True, false. You will do the multiple choice uh, quiz using arrays and function. Okay. So I'm going to stop this recording and then start the next one because YouTube accepts only 15 minutes at a time. Thank you. I'll see you in the next recording soon.